Good morning and welcome to the Daily Post on the 31st and last day of October. We have some scriptures and thoughts and ideas that we hope will be helpful and uplifting to you through this day. The scripture that we start with this morning is from Psalm 3 and verse 3. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of mine head. If you're reading the Bible in here today, we need to read through Jeremiah chapters 22 and 23, and we move into the epistle of Paul to Titus, chapter 1. Thoughts of the day. The light of a hundred stars doesn't equal the light of the moon. Some people make headlines. Others make history. The search for happiness is one of the chief sources of unhappiness. The motivational thought for the day, true courage is not the absence of fear. Rather, it is the taking of action in spite of the fear. On this day. In 1517 on this day, Martin Luther sent his 95 theses to Albert of Brandenburg, Archbishop of Mainz, precipitating the Protestant Reformation. In 1876 on this day, Great Bakaranja Cyclone of 1876 ravaged British India, which is modern-day Bangladesh, killing over 200,000 people. In 1888, Scottish inventor John Boyd Dunlop patented pneumatic bicycle tyres on this day. And in 1923, 160 consecutive days of 100 degrees Fahrenheit or more temperature began at Marble Bar in Australia on this day. In 1940, the official end of the Battle of Britain, a six-month fight to control the skies over Britain during World War II. The Royal Air Force lost 915 aircraft. The German Luftwaffe lost 1,733. If Britain had lost the battle, it would have left Britain opened to a full invasion by German forces who had already overrun most of continental Europe. In 1952 on this day, the United States of America detonated its first hydrogen bomb at Eniwetok Atoll in the Pacific Ocean. And in 2011 on this day, the world population reached 7 billion inhabitants, according to the United Nations. 2021, the world's largest solar farm went live in Sirindorn Reservoir, Thailand, on this day. It was a hydro-floating solar hybrid system the size of 70 football fields. Personal story of the day, twisting the rules. Remember being young and having your parents seemingly dominate your life with rules and directions. Nobody likes rules, but we know that they were there for our benefit. I was afraid not to obey my parents' rules. I guess they instilled in me the fear of not obeying and the consequences I would face if I didn't. So I lived my younger life, and today, as a matter of fact, not wanting to do something that my parents would disapprove of or hear that I had done behind their backs. Not all children, or people in general, will follow rules. I know some that couldn't wait to get out from under their mum and dad's eyes in order to do what they wanted. It never mattered to them that if they were caught, it would reflect on their mother and father. Lots of them never gave the respect to their parents that they deserved anyway. 
So, what did breaking the rules matter? Respect today seems to be the number one thing which the younger generation has a problem with. A young guy told me today that you had to, quote, gain his respect, unquote. Not even parents just deserve it. I tried to explain that in our culture, it was thought that you always respected the people older than you and especially your mum and dad. And I think about the police. Not all police are respectable, but that doesn't mean that we should disrespect them. For they are the law, and we are to obey the law of the land. Therefore, you respect the job that they do. You may not like the person, but you respect them and the job that they do just the same. I believe the young people that will build the will bend the rules in one thing, will begin to twist the rules in other things as well. If you give the enemy a small piece of your life, then he will eventually get a foothold. After that, he is in the door and it is hard to get rid of him. Rules exist for a reason. God made rules. He gave us commandments to live by. And if we break those rules, then we have sinned against God. It's a fine line that we walk as a Christian. Bending rules is not in that equation. There is a narrow path that we walk by grace and his righteousness into the promised land of tomorrow. And if we bend rules, then we are not living the life that God intended. Once we have the wisdom to walk by faith in truth, because we respect God, we are in full overcoming mode of maturity. Wise words to uh, contemplate and to take on board. The devotional thoughts of the day, the first, all the fruit. And we go back to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 25 for the scripture with references from Galatians chapter 5 verses 24 to 26. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Having spent some time exploring biblical examples of the characteristics of fruit that indicate the Spirit's presence in our life, we can now return to Paul's argument in Galatians. Previously, we saw that the real problem with humanity is that all people are enslaved to their sinful nature. The law was and is powerless to fix this problem. Jesus, by dying for our sins and rising again, did what the law cannot do. He rescued us from our natural evil nature in a very evil age. His crucifixion also brings about the crucifixion of the sinful nature. See verse 24 and see also chapter 2 and verse 20. The Spirit is the means by which this rescue operation is carried out. That is, those empowered by the Spirit live not, by, not as enslaved children, but as free, mature heirs of the inheritance promised to Abraham. We live lives characterized by the fruit of the Spirit. Keeping in step with the Spirit results in a more loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, kind, good, faithful, gentle, and self-controlled person. Let's keep in mind that the fruits of the Spirit do not on their own identify a true Christian. Speaking in tongues is the sign of salvation, with the other gifts of the Spirit being there to develop. However, the fruit of the Spirit identifies those who are exercising the Spirit that dwells within them. The law does not stand against or condemn those who live in this manner. See verse 23. This is why Paul told the Jews and Gentiles who are united in Christ not to provoke or envy one another. Verse 26. Those who were born of the Spirit have fulfilled the law without toiling in its disciplines and details. It is a time to rejoice, not a time to be jealous. Praise the Lord. Wise thoughts once again. The second thought, 
A Divided Heart, the scripture from Matthew 5, verses 43 and 44. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbour and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. How is your heart today? Are you sure that it's right with God, with no hidden hostilities, hate or revenge? Have you checked its corners lately to make sure the spider webs of the past hurts are gone? Have you dusted the interior recently? The way of the world sows division among the nations, between the peoples and between even your neighbours. But God would have us to love one another, to pass on forgiveness, to tear down the walls that separate us from those in other cities, even other countries, anything that would separate us from God. He is the great I Am, the Almighty God, our provider and banner, the God of enough. There is not one barrier that he can't get through or one wall that he can't break down for the cause of unity. Love never fails. There is no love stronger than God's. There is no power on earth that can surpass the power of God that he gives to his people that obey him. Today, pray for the barriers to be taken away, for the walls to fall just as the walls of Jericho fell, so that God can bring people to him through the love shown them by his people. Again. Wise word. Praise the Lord. The facts of the day. There are 142,000 recognised species of moths and scientists estimate that there are thousands more yet to be discovered. In early America, simple wooden beds and straw mattresses were the rule in all but the wealthiest of homes. American inns during the Revolutionary War era were not lush or comfortable and an innkeeper would think nothing of requesting that a guest share his bed with a stranger when accommodation became strange. Closing thought. I am thankful for the taxes I pay because it means that I am employed. That's a sobering thought. We thank you for joining us today, and we do hope that you have been influenced and uplifted and edified by the words that uh, we brought to you today and we hope that you'll come back and see us again tomorrow morning. In the meantime, may the Lord bless your day. Bye for now.